welcome to Heritage Valley Pentecostal Assembly. We're glad that you are here with us this morning. We have reached our capacity for one third under COVID protocol in this room. And there are about 25 others in the other room watching by video as well. A number of them are visitors. And if there are any here that are faithful attenders of our church, if some of you would feel obliged to perhaps allow our visitors to move into this space and, and uh, uh, occupy the other, then that way we extend proper courtesy to our visitors. And uh, I know C and I see, thank you so much. A number of you are moving already. God bless you. Thank you for your graciousness and kindness. We truly do want to offer our very best to our visitors. God bless you so, so very much. Well, dear friends, whether you're here on site or on uh, line with us this morning, we warmly welcome each and every one of you to our Sunday morning worship time that we are excitingly calling Christmas with old friends. Last Sunday, as part of our ongoing Advent celebrations, we lit the third candle of Advent representing joy. And so this morning, we light it again along with the first and second candles of Advent symbolizing hope and peace as we remember that Christ will come again. Hallelujah. He's coming again. And he will bring everlasting peace and joy what the world craves. Yet on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we now light the candle of love, which my wife has just done. Thank you, Colleen. And that candle beautifully reminds us that that, uh, that, that love comes from God above. And as the fourth candle of Advent begins to brightly shine, it declares that Jesus Christ shows us God's perfect love, for Christ is God's love in human form. For as John 3, 16 declares, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray together, shall we? As we begin this special morning of celebrative Christmas music. Let's bow together. And now, loving God, we thank you for your gift of love shown to us perfectly in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And this morning, as we begin our time of worship together, we, we ready now our hearts to receive Christ. And we ask that our adoration and praise to him will be pleasing in his sight. We ask these things now in the name of the precious one who was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago and who is present with us in this room and with those that are online 2,000 years later. We rejoice and we say amen and amen. Well, I would like you just for a brief moment to stand, if you could, here on site and out in the foyer. And we should just take a moment to carefully greet one another. We're uh, being cautious, of course, in these times. But could you just greet, uh, stand and greet one another this morning before we welcome our special guests with us today? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Well, it's good to be able to greet one another and fellowship with each other this morning during this uh, beautiful Advent season. God bless each and every one of you. Each year that my my wife, family, and I have had the great, great honor of serving this beautiful church. We have set the Sunday morning before Christmas apart for a special presentation, honoring the coming of Jesus as a babe, as he came as 
a Savior to live, to die, to be resurrected again, and who will come again one day. And this year is no different, as we are delighted to share together in a concert of Christmas music that we are calling Christmas with old friends. Isn't it great to be able to spend Christmas with old friends? And so this morning, we're excited to be able to introduce to you uh, one of our own musicians, uh, three in particular, Bob and Donna Cornish and Peter Shepard, along with Dave and Ione Ray. And they are known as old friends. I love that name, don't you? And they're here this morning to share together with us in a heartfelt repertoire of Christmas favorites. So let's welcome them, shall we, as they minister unto the Lord unto us this morning. God bless you, each and every one. God bless you. Praise the Thank you, Pastor Larry. It's a joy to be here today with you, and we pray that what we sing will bless your hearts and will also bless the Lord. I'd like you to rise and stand with us, please, as we are going to sing about four Christmas carols this morning. The first one is Joy to the World, and uh, I invite you all to sing with us. because last year we couldn't do this. So um, I'm very excited to be here and just to share with everybody, it makes, it's a blessing. And uh, <clears throat> this next song we're gonna do called Mary's Boy Child. Now I was 12 and I heard Bel Harry Belafonte sing this and I got really excited and I thought. I didn't know you were that old. Like. <laughs> Did I lie when you asked me to marry you? I think so. <laughs> Maybe I did. So. <laughs> Anyways, and so I ordered it, because if you ordered, well, what you did, you got three free. Do you remember those albums they used to actually play like this? Yeah. Right? Got some. And so I got it, and I got Harry Belafonte's, and I was so excited, and I'd go around singing it. Well, then I got the bill, because you had to order things after that. And so I was 12, and I didn't know what to do, and I showed my parents. <clears throat> so they were hairdressers and I shampooed a long time <laughs> to pay off my debt. So I always remember Mary's little boy child and Harry Belafonte. But this is one that we've done every Christmas forever and I, I just hope that you're going to join in. 
long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, yeah. was born on Christmas Day. As shepherds watched their flocks by night, they see a bright new shining star, and they hear a choir of angels sing. From afar, are now here the angels sing, new king born today. Man shall live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Now Joseph and his wife Mary come to Bethlehem that night, but they found no place. Bear the child, not a single room was in sight. But by and by they found a little nook in a stable so forlorn. In a manger there, so cold and dark, under Mary's little boy child was born. Hark Hark now, hear the angels sing, new king born today. It's okay, it just fell. (laughs) In our home, the word joy is all over the place. It's been Donna's favorite all our lives. For over 60 years, we've celebrated Christmas together. And we have joy hanging on the tree, on the walls, (laughs) even on the towels. Unspeakable joy. One, two, three, one, two. Joy, joy, unspeakable joy. Music is filling. Mothers, grandmothers, 
Even fathers and grandfathers have rocked their children to sleep. And this is a song that at every Christmas concert, our children would sing. At every school concert that you went to, your children would sing it. It's called Away in a Manger. And there are three different tunes to this song. We're going to sing all three. Away. We'd like you to join with us again. We're going to sing, Oh, Come, All Ye Faithful. It's a song that you just can't get through Christmas without singing. Second verse, sing.
Thank you. <clears throat> The Magi, the wise men, saw a star and they followed it. And it took them to our Lord and Savior Jesus. Somebody wrote a song, there's a new star shining. And that's the name of this one, New Star Shining. started to say a little while ago that mothers, fathers, grandmas, grandpas all have held their little grandchildren or their children in their arms and rocked them to sleep. And there's nothing more special than that. I did that, we did that with our own children. I can imagine many, many years ago, 2,000 years or more, that Christ was born, that Mary, I'm sure, held Jesus in her arms, sang to him, cooed to him, and probably because he was more special, 
than any baby that had ever been born. I sang this song to my grandson the night he was born. We didn't expect him to live, but I sang to him all night. He never closed his eyes. And today I can still sing that song to him. He's now 24 years old, and he knows it. It's called Sleep, Little Babe. Sleep, little baby, on your mother's breast. God give you peace. God give you rest. You are the hope of the world tonight. So close your heard the story of Jesus. As far back as I can remember as a little boy, my mother taught me about Jesus, read me the Christian Christmas story every Christmas with the rest of our family. You've all done the same. And you know something about that story? Mm -hmm. It's still the same That's old right. story. It never changes. Little 
town of Bethlehem. You know how the story goes. Shepherds and the wise men came to praise the newborn King. God's gift to thou. Pastor Larry, come back up for a few moments. Thank you. Oh my, am I ever enjoying this morning, aren't you? Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love good music. And we're being blessed this morning indeed. Well, we want to take a moment as, as we just pause here to break this morning to welcome each and every one of you that are with us here on site, those of you who are in the foyer, and those of you who are on live. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us. In particular, we want to just extend our delight for those of you who are visiting with us here this morning, uh, I have to admit that just before the service, one of our visitors came and introduced himself to me. And he's my grade 10 and my grade 11 chemistry teacher from Medicine Hat High, Gold Mohawk School. And he informed me that I still have an assignment to hand in. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Chuck. God bless you, brother. He was one of my favorite teachers. 
And, uh, and so uh, we welcome not just the McKenzie, but all of you who are visiting with us this morning. And for those of you who are faithful in your ongoing attendance, either on site or online here at Heritage Valley Pentecostal Assembly, we do rejoice so, so very much. We thank you as a church family for your continuous giving to the Lord and to the work of this assembly as we bless those within our congregation as well as we give to the community at large. We like to call ourselves a church without walls because a church is made up of people. It's not defined by the brick and the mortar and by a place that we meet. It's by we who have been called of God to be those that will be ambassadors in the world around us and to serve and love the Lord. Lord, where he has placed us to live day in and day out. And so it is a joy for us always to bless those out in the community at large. And so your giving allows us to do so. If you're visiting with us here this morning, please don't feel any, any pressure at all in any way to give. However, if you desire, there is a container at the back of the doors of this auditorium, or you can give online by going to our church website at heritagevalleyassembly.com. I also want to inform us and continue to remind us, those of us that are part of our church here, that we are continuing to receive donations for our Christmas uh, projects of 2021. We're calling this Operation Christmas Care, and it's been our desire as church leadership that at Christmas time that we bless those outside of the walls of this church, where there are needs both locally and globally. And this year, we have selected two very worthy organizations and ministries. One is called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. It's a beautiful local uh, organization here in the greater Edmonton area that literally builds from scratch beds for children who are sleeping on the floors within this great city of ours. They say between 2 and 4% of children in Canada sleep on the floor every night or in the beds of their parents. No child should ever have to sleep on a floor. And so it is our joy to be able to give. It's our goal of $1,500 to raise, and that'll allow Sleep in Heavenly Peace to be able to build two sets of bunk beds with the bedding and all included for a worthy family within this city. And we are uh, continually looking forward to the opportunity to give. Secondly, we are also designating and targeting Turkana Ministry, a lovely ministry in the northwestern uh, part of of Kenya, where uh, one of our friends from the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada has established both a medical center, a school, a church, and a beautiful community of people. And uh, the need is great there. In particular, there are women from the surrounding areas that are pregnant with child who come to the medical center, and literally most of them have nothing but the clothes on their backs and have nothing for the children that they're expecting. And so we are giving and trusting the Lord to be able to raise $1,500, which will be able to provide mothers and children that are in that situation, up to 80, uh, a mother-child packet. That will include uh, a blanket and, and, and products that will help them to remain clean and safe and healthy. And we're looking forward to being able to give to that as well. Next Sunday, Boxing Day, we are going to be meeting as usual, and we are going to give you an update on what has come in so far, so we look forward to that in need. Also, just a little reminder that this coming Friday, we do have a Christmas Eve candlelight service, a one-hour gathering of celebration together from 5 to 6 p.m. We welcome you to be with us and with your family. And then again next Sunday. It's hard to believe we're on, uh, right on the verge of Christmas Eve. Eve, come Friday and then Boxing Day on Sunday. We will be meeting together here at 10.30 a.m. as usual, Mountain Standard Time, and we're going to be celebrating together in communion. And we've also put together, just, just to kind of keep things a little bit light-hearted, uh, a look back at the year in review and some of the bloopers that happened within our church. We're going to have a little bit of laugh in church. So some of them are, are at my expense, and uh, because I'm the king of bloopers. So uh, you're you're going to want to be here for that, and we will be preaching the word of
Spirit of God as well. We're looking forward to that time indeed. For those of you who may be familiar with our Facebook page, we also have a children's production that we just posted on Friday for children called Larry's Library, a special Christmas story. If you have a chance to go to our church Facebook page or our website, you can view that. It's just a few minutes long, and it's just for our children, and uh, we wanted to do so to honor our, our youngsters uh, in our community. Well, thank you so much for listening this morning. God bless you. And once again, we are so glad that you're here with us, both as faithful attenders and visitors here this morning. We love and appreciate you. I always say you come once, we always consider you part of the family. So God bless your family. We love you. And may the Lord continue to bless as we go into this second part of this beautiful concert of praise and Christmas carols this morning. God bless you folks as you come. We are going to invite you to stand again. We've heard the same old story, and now we're going to give you a chance to tell it, because it says, go tell it on the mountain. Please rise with us, please. Sorry. Is that it? Yeah, you need some chords here. Shepherds kept their watch or side flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Yes. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Take it again, dude. <laughs> it's your turn now. Ready? <laughs> Christ is born. One, one more time. That Jesus Christ is born. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. Over the years, everybody forms in their own minds and thoughts what their favorite carol is. I know what my wife's is, and it's always been one of my favorites, Silent Night. 
I don't know what yours is, I own or David, but this song that we're going to sing has got to be very close to my favorite song because it gives so many of the names that Jesus was called. Master, Redeemer, Savior of the world. Jehovah, Messiah, Mighty God and King. And in tar talking to, to Peter's wife, Margaret, she said, you know, our Bible studies, she said, we had a whole page of names for Jesus. We'd like to sing, this is our second last song before Pastor Larry comes to minister. It's called, I Call Him Lord. We discussed whether we should sing this as our last song before the pastor speaks or the last song that we just sang. Peter pointed out, he said, you know something? He said, this story tells the whole story. It's called, We Have a King.
by the Spirit. And Joseph was told in a dream the child that she carries is Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. What an amazing song. Born in a, in a manger as a child, an infant grew, taught, died, rose again. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's here amongst us this morning. He's there with you online. He's out in the foyer by his spirit. He is alive and well. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is the King. Praise God. Well, this morning, I know you would agree with me that each and every one of us, whether we're on site here at Taylor Seminary, at Heritage Valley Pentecostal Assembly, or viewing online, we have been honored, and I know you would agree with me, to partake in, I don't know how else to say it, but a sumptuous banquet of Christmas music. I feel well fed, don't you? And some of you look at me and said, yes, you are. <laughs> but today, through the beautiful smorgasbord of yuletide songs that have been lovingly presented by Bob and Donna and Dave and Ione and Peter. 
Haven't you sensed that I know that God Almighty, he's being exalted, he's being glorified, his name is being uplifted on high. And I know that was your intent. And that's why we, sh we showed up this morning. We wanted to adore and praise the Lord. And he has been glorified. And if you're like me, you can unhesitatingly testify to the fact that, that each of these festive Christ-honoring songs that have been sung today have touched us deeply. I almost felt like your grandson. I'm a pretty big baby. Those songs touch our hearts. They bring comfort, they bring encouragement, and they inspired us afresh. Thank you. As Steve Pass has declared, a gentleman who writes much in Christmas music, he said, the sound of Christmas praise and thanksgiving is one of the best offerings that we can give to God. Yet not only does such cherished music please God, but it also sends us into life with thanksgiving power. We'll be able to go from this place this morning, not only knowing God has been glorified, but we can exit this place and go back out into the place where God has, has uh, wonderfully situated us and know that we are empowered with thanksgiving grace from the Lord himself. In just a few moments, old friends will conclude this, this glorious offering of music with one of the most beloved carols of Christmas, and I can hardly wait. The beautiful and lovely silent night, holy night. I won't sing it because I'll spoil it. Amazingly, this, this anthem of the Christmas season has been translated into at least 300 languages around the world. It's been recently designated by the United Nations Agency, UNESCO, as a treasured item of world cultural heritage. And it's been arranged in dozens of different musical styles from gospel to heavy metal. Now, wouldn't you like to hear Silent Night and heavy metal? <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> Yet if you know the familiar story, the song's origin, you will know that it, it didn't start out with, with such outstanding notoriety and its, its success, in fact, as history records in 1816. A young and relatively an unknown Austrian priest by the name of Joseph Moore, and incidentally, his great, great, great granddaughter sang on the platform here this morning, Donna Cornish is his great, great, great granddaughter. Can I get your autograph after? <laughs> well, this wonderful man by the name of Joseph Moore, one day he composed a simple and a six stanza Christmas poem that began with the words, and forgive me to all of you who are German, because I'm just a stubborn Swede. Still knocking, pretty good. Hillick knocking. Hillenach. Hillenach. Thank you, Ger. Thank you, Gary. And yet, as lovely as it was, it this poem that he composed so lovingly remained in near obscurity until, almost by chance, two years later, he asked his musically inclined friend Franz Gruber if he might put the words to music. And wonderfully, as we learn from history, Gruber obliged that on Christmas Eve, 1818, Moore and Gruber, they sang Silent Night, Holy Night, in the St. Nicholas Parish Church in Orbendorf, Austria. And they sang it for the first time in the quietness of that beautiful church accompanied only by an acoustic guitar because a mouse had eaten through the church organ. That's what they say. And yet, sadly, 
Again, as history proclaims, the song didn't initially catch on. It was nearly relegated to the dust and forgotten back roads of time until a few late years later, a small band of traveling folk singers, they added it to their repertoire and suddenly it became well known and widely popular and eventually was sung even before the royal families of Europe and the appreciative of masses of North America and beyond. Until now, the whole world sings it at Christmas. And yet, curiously, the title of the superb and renowned carol is not even based on any express detail of the biblical Christmas story. We're not ever told that the night Jesus was born was silent. In fact, we have ample evidence to suggest otherwise. For, for instance, childbirth is rarely a quiet affair, and likely Christ's wasn't either. Newborn babies tend to cry when they're not sleeping. You know what I mean? Some of us have suffered from sleep deprivation over the years. We know it firsthand, and likely Jesus cried as well. And I don't know whether sheep make noise at night, bah, bad sheep. <laughs> but I'm quite sure that, uh, as the scriptures tell us, a great company of the heavenly hosts saying, Glory to God in the highest. What a field! <laughs> the countryside with joyous and exuberant noise. So then why would have Donna, we're going to have to take this up with your great, great, great grandfather. Why would Joseph Moore have even considered the title Silent Night? Why? Because I believe we find a clue to his intention in the second part of the title, Silent Night. And then he wrote... Holy night. For you see, my dear friends, in the presence of holiness, we are often gripped by stunned silence. For even the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk echoes this truth when he declared in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 20, the Lord is in his holy temple... So let all the earth be silent in honor and wonder before him. I believe that in the imagination of Donna's great, great, great grandfather, the night of Jesus' birth was silent. Why? Why? Because it was holy. And it was set apart from other nights because for the first time in human history, the holy God who put the universe in place physically presenced himself in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, in human form on planet Earth. Yet so often our Christmas celebrations can be anything but silence. Whether we're hearing the choirs belting out and how joyous it is to hear the, the words of joy to the world or the, or the sounds of crowds in the shopping malls or the joyful cries of children opening the presents and I can hardly wait for my granddaughter to rip open her present and I'm not going to say what it is because I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> But Christmas is hardly silent. Yet if we could just take the time during this festive season to retreat even for a few moments from all of the commotion, to consider anew the great mystery of Christ's coming as a babe in the manger from the splendors of heaven. If we could imagine what it had been like to join the shepherds in that primitive setting with all of its sounds and smells, the setting of Jesus' birthplace, 
And perhaps, just perhaps, we may hear in this Christmas season a new and magnificent way the prophet Habakkuk's words, and let me paraphrase in my own way. And now the Lord, Jesus, who is in his holy feeding trough, a rustic manger of wood, as he lies there, let all the earth be silent in awe and wonder before him. And as we do so, not only will God receive his proper adoration and rightful glory, praise, and thanksgiving, but our Holy Savior will quiet our minds, will quiet our minds that have been distressed by the challenges within our present lives. Are any of you that are here today and watching online and your minds, your hearts are distressed by what's going on in your present life, may I encourage you to bow at that holy manger and allow his quietness to soothe your heart. May he calm our spirits that have been saddened by the losses of the past year. And there are some of us here this morning, some of us online who have lost loved ones that have passed from us this year. And we are feeling the void and the pain and the woundedness of their departure. Even though they've gone to be with the Lord, there's still a loneliness that perhaps has set in to our hearts. May I encourage you to come back again to this humble place where Jesus lies and let his holiness calm your hearts. And may he, the one who came 2,000 years ago, born in that manger, steal our hearts of concerns about the future. I've talked to more people as you have in these last two years who have said, Pastor Larry, what's going on? Is God in control? What's happening? I'm fearing for the future. If it's like this now, what's it going to be like in the future? And I'm here on this 19th day of December 2021, and I'm here to say that Jesus Christ, who was born in the babe, is a holy God, and he will silence all of the concerns that you may have in your hearts about the future, for he has the future in his hands. And he says to you this morning in a quiet whisper, not a shout, fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Now, it's Bob and, and Donna, Peter, Dave Lee, I own come to conclude our time together with the singing of this song that I've just described, Silent Night. I want to encourage us even just to close our eyes, to lift our hands in praise to the Lord and worship. Worship the holy infant of Bethlehem and our present Savior, Jesus Christ. And can I encourage us as we bring our service to a conclusion this morning to allow him to speak his peace over your life and your situation and your circumstances. May you allow him to gently and graciously and mercifully calm and quiet your life with his presence. 
For as the psalmist so beautifully declares, one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible, and he says to us this morning, be still, be silent, for I am holy, for I am your God. Silent night, holy night. Let's worship together as they come. Would you stand with us, please? I'm going to play on the harmonica one verse of Silent Night, and we would invite you to hum or ooh or ah right along with us as we do it, and then we will sing. Yeah. 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. As we come to the end of this service, I'm going to close in prayer. And we as family, our family, have experienced death. Um, Gary, Dave, is a family member. He's lost his brother. Mm -hmm. I lost my dad. I lost my cousin. And there's many in this congregation have lost mm -hmm. loved ones. Mm -hmm. So as we come to this Christmas season, mm -hmm. we rejoice, as Larry said, they've gone to be with Jesus. Yes. But there is an empty chair. So would you join me in prayer? Yes. Praying for those that have lost loved ones, but those that are sick, those that have unspoken requests. Yes. Because many are having many unspoken requests. Yes. <laughs> There's some heartaches in this congregation and online. We know that. Yes. And as a pastor's wife, I hear a lot of stories mm -hmm. and a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I say, Father God, mm -hmm. where is the silence? Where is yes. the peace? Yes. Would you join with me? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we truly can come to you with all our hearts, all the needs, all the tears and the sadness and the loss that we have within our yes. homes this yes. Christmas season. Yes. We thank yes. you for the word of God. We always go to it. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm yes. 23, yes. verse 1. Lord Jesus, you are our God. We thank you yes. that we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Lord, God. for those that do not know you, we ask yes. that this yes. Christmas season yes. you would bring them to yourself. Yes, we pray, Father. We pray for our unsaved loved ones. Yes. We pray for those that we have yes. prayed for for many years. Yes. And we haven't seen yes. them come, but we just keep praying. Yes. And we're not beggars. That's right. But we thank we're you that children. we can bring our, our heart's desires to yes. you. Yes, God. And we kneel Jesus. before your throne this Christmas season, yes. asking that you would be with us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. On behalf of our church family and those of you who have joined with us as visitors, thank you again for being here this morning. And can we just extend our thanks once again to these wonderful dear friends that have ministered to the Lord and to our hearts today so beautifully. God bless you. We love and appreciate you so much. Praise the Lord. It's hard to believe you've only been together since the summertime. <laughs> Practicing. Praise the Lord. You blessed us and ministered. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may his mercy be extended to each and every one of you at this Christmas season. And may you walk in the perfect peace given by the Prince of Peace himself to you. And we will thank you and give you all the praise, for he is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy. And everyone agreed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for viewing online. Until we see you again, hopefully on Christmas Eve, this Friday, from 5 to 6. God bless you. Would you take a moment to just greet one another in the Lord, either here and in the foyer. Thank you again. God bless you, and thank you for coming. God bless. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.